for Britain and British aircraft, certainly a memorable year. From Super VC-10s down to private planes, Farnborough had them all. Spectacle backed by expertise, the RAF's Red Arrows are certain show stealers. The United States laid on a typical American welcome to the Duke of Edinburgh. Prince Philip was on a dual mission to help British exports and also raise money for the Variety Club, the show business children's charity. New York set out to provide the biggest and best welcome of all America. In addition to raising a million dollars for Variety Club, the Duke went to see how Fifth Avenue displays British goods on behalf of the British Export to America Council. It has always been said that trade follows the flag. Nowadays, it follows the Duke, too, which makes him a perfect ambassador to trade. The Commonwealth Games brought outstanding achievements by British athletes. Brian Phelps here on a way to a gold medal. With Prince Charles and Princess Anne, the Duke saw Brian Phelps receive his gold. Jill Slattery won hers in the 220 yards breaststroke. And in the long jump, Lynn Davis consolidated his Olympics reputation with another gold for Britain. One more gold in the women's 110 yard backstroke. The winner, Linda Lutgrove. Great achievements too in outer space this year. Astronaut Richard Gordon tethered the Agena target vehicle with a Dacron rope. Then back to join fellow astronaut Charles Conrad. These men maneuvered their capsule to within feet of the target vehicle, 850 miles above Earth. The splashdown, the best yet, was within half a mile of its Atlantic target. For the astronauts, a great moment as the capsule was opened and they breathed their first fresh air for 80 hours. Gordon and Conrad won their place in space exploration history. Their flight, a big step towards the landing of men on the moon. Two man's exploration achievement, who can foresee a limit? After outer space came another discovery, oil under the sea. Gas from such rigs is becoming commonplace, but oil in quantity could be the brightest prospect for Britain. Early days yet, nevertheless an achievement that could add another success to the nation. No easy year 1966 for the motor industry. Maintaining sales to the world called for prodigious effort. There were new and modified models to tempt both the home buyer and world markets. It was a mouth-watering motor show. And this has been the greatest year of exports for the British motor industry. Leader in the all-important trading figures. Lord Mayor's Show. For more than 700 years, the elected first citizen has journeyed westwards from the City of London to be sworn in. On his drive from the Mansion House, 
the Lord Mayor passed beneath the modern buildings which now tower above the city's square mile. It's almost a new city now, yet deeply rooted in an unrivaled past. The buildings express London's increasing importance to the national economy and in world finance, a tremendous achievement in a growingly competitive world. British democracy, based on constitutional monarchy and the mother of parliaments, has its roots in history, but marches in step with the 1960s. The state opening of parliament. This year, the House of Commons opened its doors to film cameras for the first time. An achievement perhaps in our own field, to penetrate one of the few remaining barriers to newsreel reporters. Mr. Speaker. The Queen commands this Honourable House to attend Her Majesty immediately in the House of Peers. soccer. England won the World Cup. The scoreboard at full time, then extra time. Jeff has shot. The ball seemed to bounce in from the underside of the bar. It spun out again. Goal claimed England. The referee consulted the linesman and goal it was. Not without protest from the West Germans. three, Germany two, the second period of extra time, and Hurst scored for the third time. England had won the World Cup. Bobby Charlton, the emotion was too much. It was an outstanding achievement in sport. A mighty pointer to Britain's winning place in a competitive world.